So today a rather interesting product I would say I'm working on. I'm not gonna tell you what the video will be about but basically this is a portable power station and uh, this is how it is called. Uh, basically if we hook it up and turn it on here we got oh okay um i removed some wires uh that is why there is now an arrow message as you can see on the front here uh normally it powers up just fine and then you can activate i think you cannot activate them if there's an error message okay let's forget that for now um basically put it works um, what it is it is basically if we well first off let's disconnect the battery just for safety reasons and it is basically if we look under here a big battery pack uh, i think 500 watt hours and that is con no, it's not that easy well not that important right now and uh, that is basically connected to this um custom pcb and uh, which got all the functions basically put you got a um, switching converter here which takes the input voltage from uh, this casing you can plug it in here and that can charge up the battery then here you got an inverter circuits and the uh, big heatsink is also for the um, transistors which are used for that then you got here i think uh, for the driving of the inverter and also the control pcb um, for the control board on the front and then you got also um, another regulator which creates 12 volts dc then you got a cigarette lighter you got uh, the uh, outlets the electrical outlet for the inverter and then also a usb power um, board as you can see here one usb pd for usb ports and on the back um, you also got a light and the dc input so this is actually very useful i think if you go camping if you're outdoors and you just need some uh, juice and um, to power your electronics charge your phone maybe do an emergency cut with a jigsaw I think this uh, such a device is really awesome to have. Um, the only thing that's a bit of a disadvantage, as you might already have thought, there's a lot of electronics in here. The battery pack is also big. It's not a cheap device. So um, I'm currently just seeing how it works, how it uh, all comes together as a unit. And then I will take this knowledge and maybe create something on my own um, with something I have laying around. Again, this will not be the cheapest video. Um, it will be quite expensive, I would say, but still, I think very interesting and something like this is very handy to have. So I hope you're looking forward to the video. So I'm working on another big project this time. Um, don't mind my voice. Um, I actually currently have a cold and my voice is gone. So I hope that in two, three days it is back to normal so I can do the voiceover and get this video done because it is actually a pretty big one. Uh, literally, <laughs> the battery pack is pretty big. Uh, you might recognize this from a, two previous videos, I think in the uh, power wall video I showed it off and then I also showed it off um, when I tried um, creating a big battery pack for my motorized longboard. And it is back again, this time with a proper awesome purpose. Um, you can see it is made in a battery pack for cells, so that is 12 volts. We got a very nice BMS here, um, very cool one with Bluetooth functionality. So basically I can use my phone to see how much current is going out, how much current is going in. I can see all of that and um, you, can custom, you can set the settings in the app as well and all kinds of cool things it tracks everything and to this bms there are two current sensors attached this one and this one right here basically this one is for charging and this one is for the load and you might already have guessed what this is this is basically just a portable power station uh, in that diy attempt so i'm using this battery pack which i will charge with uh, this lab bench power supply currently it is charging with a constant current of 5 amps uh, that will take a long time because this is a 1.2 kilowatt hour battery pack so i think um it's uh, you can do the math um i'm pumping in right now at 67 watts and with 1.2 kilowatt hours uh, that means something like 20 hours of charging and that's just one side the charging side and then we got here a smart relay which can basically disconnect the charging or disconnect the load if something goes wrong or if i choose to with those two 
buttons right here. So um, right now it is charging, but we can, for example, stop the charging. You can see it here, the current went down and we can, for example, turn on the load side. So right now, um, those are my loads, basically a small two USB outputs, which I think is useful for such a power station and also a big inverter, which you can see is currently turned on. And do I have something? Yeah, wait a minute. So here I got my lovely jigsaw. If you're out on a camping trip and want to do some wood cutting or something, you can you can do that without a problem. Yeah, you can do that without a problem with this system. And I think it's pretty awesome for camping, for outdoors, anything like that. And it is actually a DIY or buy episode. So this is all the electrical stuff. I will now do it, put that all into a nice casing enclosure. Um, and then I will have a finished system, which will hopefully come in handy for later. So yeah, I um, hope you're looking forward to that video. So I'm currently trying something new. Uh, as you might know, I do have this Snapmaker for quite a while now. And I thought for this project, why not use it a bit more? And those are basically cutouts for all the components that need to be mounted. And I thought, why not label them in a very nice way? And as you can see here on the screen, the laser is doing just that right now. Um, looks pretty promising, I would say. So the first letter should be a D and then DC in. Yeah, that looks all right. Maybe the um, where it is positioned is not perfect, but I think uh, it will give it a very nice touch. So yeah. This project is going along pretty well. Hey there! So I'm almost done with creating a new video. Uh, the subject this time, uh, one from the uh, wacky idea box, I would say. Actually, I didn't have this on my radar until just recently, I think uh, a month ago. I uh, just looked on Amazon and I found uh, that such conductive ink pens are nowadays pretty I would say not popular, but uh, they are already available and there are different kinds. And I thought, is there really an application for that? Um, I just wanted to find, find out um, how they work, um, how well they perform electri electrically, electrically, oh my God, um, how conductive, if there is problems with that, how you can use that. And so I actually just ordered two of them. One of them, body paint, a bit Chinese, um, as you might already have guessed. Uh, this one, you have all. You would have to shake them all, and this one um, does such nice, does such a nice color. And the problem with this one, which uh, is why I didn't go f uh, very far with it while testing, you cannot solder to it. So uh, no matter what I tried, real soldering with a soldering iron or hot air soldering doesn't work. Um, even though it looked pretty promising at first, but. I had to go with this one um, with lots of warning labels, uh, a so-called silver varnish pen, conductive pen. And with it, I actually tried a lot of experiments, like here you can see uh, just the resistance and how much current it can handle. So that uh, was uh, quite a hot experiment, <laughs> literally. Uh, then I tried some applications where I think such conductive ink is useful, like maybe for LED arts, uh, this actually does work. I will talk about it in the video, how well uh, this turned out. Then I did some more testing concerning frequencies, like um, if there is, are there any problems when you use high frequency square wave, sine wave, something like that. And that is why I just did this small Arduino example with addressable LEDs. And they, of course, use a high frequency to communicate, I think 800 kilohertz. And at the end, I then did uh, a proper circuit. Uh, this is a 555 timer circuit and it's configured so that it spits out a square wave, which we can not only hear, but we can also see that it works. So let's just hook that up. Yeah, as you can see, it is a basic 555 timer circuit. It works just fine. And uh, you can adjust the frequency with the potentiometer here, but I will not do that right now. And so in the end, this thing works like um, it does work better than I expected. Um, 
But the thing is, I still, I did this more like an experiment, this video, just to see because I'm interested in alternatives to soldering. I did a video about a conductive 3D printing filament. I did a video about uh, a printer that can print um, PCBs. Uh, and I think it's, the PCB printer also uses such silver ink. And I thought, why not give it a shot and see what I can do with it? So you can basically see my verdict in the video for what I think this stuff is useful or whether you don't have to bother with it. <laughs> this, this was basically just for fun. And especially with the, uh, where is it, with the current test, I had a lot of fun because this stuff performed in an unexpected way, I would say. So watch the video if that sounds interesting to you. So another clip I think um, many viewers have waited for, um, for this project in particular, um, because this is my first prototype and you can see on the back and due to the big capacitor here, which is not really necessary, um, it's just a prototype, uh, just me seeing if this concept works. And this is basically a, a proper switch mode power supply. And with proper, I mean, uh, normally when people think about switch mode power supply, they think about what goes into mains voltage and then converts into a DC voltage, like 230 volts AC on the input and like maybe five or 12 volts on the output. That's what's most people associate with uh, switch mode power supplies, but uh, there are actually a lot of switch mode power supplies topologies, um, which also go into the low voltage DC region, like five volts um, in, 12 volts out, 12 volts in, five volts out. Those are buck and boost converters. And then there are other types. And for this particular one, I chose a very um, popular topology. Um, it is a flyback converter actually and what's um very um how do i say it? typical for flyback converter is this transformer this is a flyback transformer uh, a bit special in its construction and um, that it comes with an air gap which uh, storage stores energy and it is also referred to as a coupled inductor oftentimes and those are actually from word electronic they sent me a bunch of those and they said, hey, uh, let's use them in a project. Let's show them off how they are most of the time used. And it just cor correlates with what uh, viewers asked for with such a tutorial. Of course, it will not be, you can see it's on perfboard. Um, I will do another version better on also perfboard. I will not make a proper PCB. Uh, we are still working here with uh, mains voltage, which can be dangerous. So in the end, it is not recommended to build such a thing and um, because this output power, the transformer is uh, very small, uh, is only about 200 milliamps at five volts. So this is just for some low power projects, just as a learning experience basically. But uh, you can take those principles and not scale them up <laughs> if you're not a professional. I, it's really just about the learning because uh, such power supplies are everywhere. And I think it's very interesting and important to understand how they work and yeah, that's that's basically the point of the video. I just wanted to show you, um, I did that. I will continue, uh, I will now write a script about this whole subject and then hopefully in a month or two, uh, the video will be done. So look forward to that.